Welcome back to URM Academy. If you are a rock or metal producer, this is your home on YouTube. And today, we've got something pretty cool for you. It's a clip from our brand new Advanced Logic Pro Fast Track. Honestly, I sincerely think this is the best piece of education anybody has ever done on Logic. So if you use Logic or you don't love your DAW and you thought about switching, definitely check this out. It's taught by Julian from the Machine Shop. He's the head engineer over there, works under Machine, who you know for working with bands like Lamb of God and Fall Out Boy and Suicide Silence and zillions of others. You saw him on Nail the Mix. We love Machine, we love Julian, and they are a logic shop. So he's gonna show you how to do something that many people think cannot be done in logic, editing drums. Yes, it can be done, and you're about to see exactly how to do it. Okay, so now my drummer Zach has recorded drums to this. I sent him a session and he recorded into his own version of my session. So his drums actually should line up perfectly with my session. Um, and I'm going to show you guys how to import drums into Logic from another Logic session. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to can the tracks we had set up because he used these to record, but now we're gonna replace ours with his. So let's highlight these and delete them. And now let's go to the browser. And under all files, I have put his session on the desktop uh, right here, track drums. And you're gonna double click on the session icon. And then you'll see you get this view right here. And this will show me all the tracks that he sent me. So he cleaned out his session all nice like, and I have this session of drums here. So I am going to highlight all these drum tracks. And here we get a couple cool options. So I can import the content, yes, that would be the, the tracks themselves. And I can also import a couple other things. I can import his sends, his in and output settings. Uh, we can keep the, what is this, the, the bus number? I don't wanna do that. We can import any automation he did and notes. Uh, for what we're doing now, I actually am just gonna import the content and I'm gonna import the plugins because why not? So let's go ahead and add these and you see the drop right in, uh, I can. So clicking around. I can see the drums drop right in. And not only that, but uh, like I said, I get his plugins, any plugins he was using, and I get his levels, his panning, and that sort of stuff. So that's pretty cool. It's a better way than just importing audio and kind of doing that stuff from scratch, since he used Logic. We're a step ahead there. Editing drums and Logic. So I must confess, at the machine shop, we do not edit drums in Logic. We import them into Pro Tools. But some of you don't have Pro Tools. Maybe you, for whatever reason, have to do it in Logic. So I'm going to show you guys how to edit drums in Logic. And in order to do that, I have my puppy dog mouse pad for emotional support, and I have a box of tissues. So let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing we're going to do is turn off our groups, which we have a shortcut for that, which is G. That turns off all groups, which you can see here in the mixer window. Let's see how they get grayed out. So we're going to turn off groups, and then uh, we're going to double click the kick track here. And we're going to go to File. Now, this window down here is the audio file editor. This is where you can further fine tune audio. Uh, some people find it easier to edit in this window. Uh, what we're going to do here for drum editing is we are going to uh, go into transient editing mode here. So what this does is it's going to automatically go through our kick channel and just detect the transients. And as you can see, it is pretty spot on. So we got the magnifying glass tool on the right click, or yeah, on the right click, and then we got the regular, just regular old left click tool on the left. So what we're gonna go do is I'm actually going to make my main tool my eraser tool with escape E. And we're gonna just go through and listen and uh, just remove any false transients this may have picked up. Let's start from the beginning here. So you, see, you can already see there's a lot of snares it's picking up.
be careful with clicking that top window because it'll launch you all over the place. And there's a, there's a couple of bad comp edits here, but we're just gonna ignore those for the time being and move on. But what I will do is I want to zoom in on that region with the bad comp, and I wanna just fix it to be where we actually want that transient to be. So what we're gonna do is erase that tool. Let's zoom in here with right click on the magnifying glass. And you can see there's just a little bad edit there. So what we're gonna do is grab the pencil tool, and this will allow us to actually put a marker where it needs to go. So let's zoom out a little bit more. Okay. Damn, my zooming is fucking shot. <laughs> this guy right here. Again, there's another bad edit there. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Let's erase that. Let's put the transient right on the money there. And zoom out horizontally. Eraser tool, get rid of that guy. And again, this is a pretty short song. Um, if I was doing this for a long-winded song, I would probably make some key commands to just hop around uh, using the arrow keys zoom in and out. Because those zoom in and out functions are only for the main window. They don't exist in this function. So I'm using this little slider to get in and out. But you may want to just set, if you're going to do a lot of this in Logic, you may want to make some key commands here to help you out. All right, cool. So now we have we have told Logic where we want the kicks to be sliced at for this whole track. So let's go back and listen and make sure we're spot on, just to be super sure. And the reason we're doing this is because you could just select this and select the slicing algorithm, and it would try to do it automatically. But it's really better suited if you if you do this part manually first for the main things you want to align by. So I'm going to use the kick and the snare top. So that's why we're starting with the kick. Cool, pretty spot on. Now let's go to the snare track and do the same thing. Let's go ahead and double click that, bring up the file editor, and let's go ahead and analyze the transients. And you can actually massage this a little more by using these plus and minus buttons here. It's just gonna give you more or less transients. I like the school of removing them with the eraser tool and having more than I need. Um, but if you prefer to have less and add them in, you can do that too. I can see some of these bigger snare hits. Uh, let's roll with these settings right now. We got our eraser tool, escape E, and let's go for it. See, there's a, there's one it missed there, some of these softer hits. So let's go ahead and make more transients here and just erase as we need to. There we go. That looks good. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and ignore the ghost notes for now just to maintain some of his feel. But if you wanted to, some of these tall, uh, smaller ones, you'd you know you'd go get the pencil tool and you'd put that there. 
but for right now, we're going to ignore those. All right, cool. So we got pretty lucky there. A lot of these were pretty spot on. So now we have told Logic manually where we want these uh, warp tra or transient markers to be, right? So we did it for kick in and snare top. So let's go ahead and turn groups back on. So now for the actual editing part. So you may have noticed these cues on the left side of the, of the tracks here. And basically what these serve as is when you have a group and there's quantized locked audio, you want to tell Logic which tracks are the, the guide tracks, right? So we just manually did all those transient markers for kicking and snare top, so we only want Logic to listen to those. And also, see this is also a pretty cool Logic thing. You can actually just click and drag to turn multiple things off. It works for mute and solo as well, that sort of stuff. But So let's go ahead and turn these off. And now we have our group spec on, so they'll all select and what we're going to do is we are going to go turn flex time on and we're going to go to slicing. It's going to go through and analyze. Okay, so now we're going to right click and you see up at the top you have the option to slice at transient markers. So let's go ahead and do that. Cool. So now we have our slices. And now what you can do is we are going to just, just listen back. Um, there was a couple little kick flams that I think I would rather try to handle manually than let this try to quantize. So let's go listen back and find them. There was one. And you can see like these weren't that crazy off to begin with anyway, and they sound kind of cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually delete the the slices I made on the the individual little rolls, and I'm gonna leave that alone. And there's another one later, so let's find Here it is. Cool, so let's do the same thing really quick. Let's delete these. Let's grab these and pull them back. Okay, great. Let's make sure that this is still on the money. It seems like it got cut off a little bit. Oh, cool. All right, cool. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to grab all of these. And now the transients, in theory, are right at the beginning of each of these regions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Snap, and I'm going to set this to Absolute Value. Okay, and now we want to open up our List Editor. And we have all these regions that you have selected are going to come up over here. All right. so another cool part about this menu is you can quantize from here. So what we're going to do is turn Quantize on, and let's do 16th note, and we're going to hit Q. And now, if you zoom in, you'll see that these all moved a little bit. So let's go back to our one main window. And let's scroll down. Great. So now what we're going to do is we are going to create a little bit of uh, what I would call daylight. We're going to just kind of select all these regions except for the very last region. Okay, so let's unselect that and let's zoom in and let's go ahead and just drag these back a little bit this will kind of be like your padding if you're a Pro Tools user just just a little bit and let's also make a little room on the back end 
Okay. So now there is a little function. Oh yeah, this is a little, still a little wrapping. Let's make a little room between those. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we are going to go to the edit menu and you can trim region start to previous region. So what that's gonna do is basically just fill in all the gaps and allow you to still maintain the transients for everything. And so now we can go through and listen and see how see how it sounds without crossfading anything. Just see if it all lined up pretty well. A little weird snare hit there. Let's go fix that. Maybe got cut off a little bit. Cool. weird edit there. I wonder if I can fix that by just dragging this back. It might just be a bad comp. It's a little better. That's what happens when you have a hit that's a little too early. Cool, not bad. So, and you know, it always helps to have a drummer, it, like in anything, when it comes to vocal tuning or editing drums, it helps to have a drummer that's good and spot on and hits well, which Zach does. So let's go ahead and select all these tracks and let's go ahead and crossfade these. So let's go down here, let's go to equal power. Uh, we'll type it in four, cool. And then let's hit Shift J. What Shift J is going to do is consolidate all of them at once. It's going to ask us, do you want to do that? Yes, we do. Okay, so hopefully this didn't scare you too bad um, to edit drums and logic if, if that's the scenario you're in. But now let's move on to the next step, which is adding MIDI notes to our drum shells. All right, that was a clip from our brand new Logic Pro Fast Track. Now, if anybody tells you that you cannot edit drums in Logic, you can say, BS, watch this. You now have proof <laughs> that it can be done. So if you liked this, there are 39 more videos like this one in that fast track, 39. This is a 40 piece course that goes deeper in Logic than I thought was possible, to be honest with you, but we did it. So if you like this, hit that link in the description below to join URM Enhanced to get access to the rest of this fast track and over 30 other ones. So it's a pretty cool deal. Check it out and we'll see you there.